Well guys, I want to start with why I started filming way back in the day, and I've been doing this ever since I was a little kid. And I always loved filming just because I loved Grandpa's stories. And Grandpa always told the best deer hunting stories, down to the finest details. And for me, that made such a big impact, I wanted to be able to share that with the world. And instead of telling stories, the best way to do that, for, for me, was through the camera lens. Because if you capture it on film, then you can share that with the world. And for me, that was what it was all about. It was never about sponsors. It was never about a TV show or a popular YouTube channel. I just loved sharing the experiences with people. And that all started back when I was a little kid and started with this camera right here. You know, this little guy was uh, what I started with, gosh, 15, 20 years ago. And uh, it's just kind of funny to think back, you know, on, on all those moments I captured on videos from shooting rats in the barn with my recurve all the way to killing a big old buck with double drop tines was all captured uh, on this camera. So for starters, I want you guys to understand good is good enough when it comes to producing this content. You can have tons of cameras and at all the different angles and all that stuff but and I'll get to that that's more of the pro level but if you're just getting started you want to just press record and most people don't do that or they don't get the kill on film so I want to break down everything that we do from uh, filming in a ground blind to tree stands to spot and stalk all that fun stuff and dive into all the details right now let's get started so there's a lot of different types of cameras out there and from beginner all the way to advanced and I want to kind of break down all of them and why some are so expensive and why some aren't. So for starters I want to start with kind of what we hunt with which is going to be kind of crazy on a price wise but hang in there I promise I'm going to get down to these guys and the differences. So we hunt with a Sony a7R3, which is actually a picture tanky camera, um, takes 40 megapixels, but we also love to film with it just because it could do 1080 at 120 frames, which we'll dive into later what, why that's good. But uh, the re main reason we love filming with a Sony A7R3 is because the sensor size is so large. The larger the sensor, the more light allow is allowed in, and the more light means you can film in lower light. So you know as well as I do with hunting, uh, a lot of times a deer come out at first light or last light, so that, that golden window is critical to be able to capture on video in good quality, and that pretty much boils down the main differences between cameras is sensor size. But we'll dive into that in a minute. I wanna break down my entire setup. So A7R3 as a body, the lens that we've been running a lot with is the 70 to 300 which is, uh, is a pretty sweet lens. And then we have a GoPro mounted on top. Now, I will dive deeply into why we do that um, in a minute, but that is critical, especially if you're running a 70 to 300 lens. Because when I zoom all the way out, especially in a ground blind situation like this, and I'm self-filming or Sarah's shooting or I'm filming someone else or someone's filming me, it doesn't matter, that is too tight. We will always go to that, that second angle there. And uh, I will show you many other benefits of having it on the lens hood. But you can see it kind of just stays there, always capturing a wide angle. And then we got the a Rode Mic Pro um, mic here. This this mic is not cheap. It's like 300 bucks, but it's awesome because it runs off of an internal power that you don't need to change the battery with. So this is great because it recharges and automatically turns on and off with the camera. In hunting situations that's really important especially when you know if you turn the camera on you could see the mic turns on. Well in hunting situations if you turn this on and you're in a tense high adrenaline situation and you forget to turn this on and it's plugged in you have no audio. You're screwed and that happened to me with the deer and I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> it sucks. But so that's why I spent the money, got the $300 Rode Mic Pro. And you see these big cat whiskers because it helps with wind noise. As you might experience actually hearing some in the camera right now because I have the mic on top of this camera, meaning we're not actually running a Rode Mic on the camera we're filming this this series with. And so you'll actually hear some of that wind. That would not be happening if this was on there. But for sake of showing you guys what we film with, it's important. So we're talking 300 bucks. The R3 body is just under $3,000, you know, so this body is expensive. 
And then you got a thousand dollar lens because this is a G series. Again, high quality lens, soaks up a lot of light, allows a lower f-stop, which if you want to learn about f-stop and ISOs and all these other things, there's plenty of YouTube videos about that. I'm not going to dive into that level of detail. But this is a really good lens for low light. Thousand bucks. And then you got a $400 GoPro on the front. And I mean, tripod, all that stuff. I mean, you add all this up and you're looking at a five or $6,000 setup. And that's a lot, especially if you're just starting out and you don't have to. You don't have to spend that kind of money. I like to spend that kind of money on this setup because I feel the better quality uh, filming job you do, the, the more real the memory is. You know, I, I think that's important to understand. You know, if, because for me, if I capture it in 4K ultra high definition, it makes that memory more real for me and more real for you guys watching. You know, if it's really crappy, handy, shaky footage, it, it, it takes you out of that moment. And you never want to do that. So that's why I love, and Sarah, I guess, probably doesn't love it as much as I do, spending the money on the, the good stuff. And I'm not saying this is the best camera. You can upgrade to reds, all kinds of weird stuff. but. The, then you take away from the hunt trying to make those cameras work for those situations. And uh, you might hear some random shuffling in the blind. It's not a rodent, it's my dog, Arrow. She is hanging out <laughs> with us today. But, uh, but yeah, so super expensive setup. Do you need to do spend the money for this? No, absolutely not, especially if you're not skilled in a DSLR or mirrorless camera setup like this. Because for tight shots you're gonna need different lenses you're gonna this is a money pit a big one and so for tight shots and b-roll shots we switch out to another lens so you're gonna to want to make sure um, if you're gonna spend the money on this that you're experienced with this or ready to learn because that camera is a million times harder to operate than a handy cam version which is this so now that you kind of know what we run I want to dive into this one I think this 4K FDR AX700 is probably the best all-around camera for a hunter to film with. Um, it's got great zoom, easy user-friendly, especially self-filming. You can um, you can see it's got a uh, a screen on the side here, so if you're self-filming, you can see that. You can't do that with this camera. Um, great zoom, and it does 4K at 30 frames, which is pretty good, but what I'm most excited about it with this camera is it does 1080 at 120 continuous with audio, audio but also does a thousand frames per second for super slow motion up to four seconds. And we will dive into all those details later, but I want to show you this camera. Um, and we'll dive into frame rates later. But this camera runs at 1800 bucks. And it does a really, a really great job. Pretty large sensor, does pretty well in low light. Not as good as this camera, but still pretty good. Um, so all in all, if you're like, okay, I just want to see what camera to buy, this is the camera to buy. But it is pretty expensive. $1,800 is a hard pill to swallow. So if that is something you can't afford, get yourself a little handy cam. Guys, this guy I think cost me like 300 bucks or something back in the day. I mean, it's it was a Panasonic. It may have been a thousand dollars back in the day, but now it's obsolete. But this represents not this exact camera, but this camera represents a small handy cam version of of what I'm showing you. This is a cheap. You can get these for like 300 bucks. This style of camera, and if this is all you can afford, get this. It's better than not recording at all. And so. Always remember this when it comes to creating YouTube content and everything else, is good is good enough. It's better than nothing at all. So something that you can run and you're confident with, if that's this, do it. So anyway, three different levels of cameras and I think for an overall best camera, a handy cam style is easiest. This one you kind of need someone to operate it, especially if you're self-filming. If I'm filming in a tree stand, Self-filming in a tree stand, I will run one of these. If I have someone filming for me, like my wife, or a cameraman, or somebody, then I will run this. So, just so you guys can see kind of the differences. Always remember, get the best camera you can afford. No matter if that's a $250 camera, or a $6,000 setup, get the best camera you can afford. Now that we've kind of dove through the different types of cameras that, that you could be using from a DSLR mirrorless style to high level handy cam to a low level handy cam, I also want to dive into second angle cameras because 
Nobody hates <laughs> anything more than a reenactment. I'm not an actor. Everyone on TV that's doing hunting shows probably aren't great actors. Some of them probably are, but I know I'm not. So I'm not gonna sit there, kill the deer, and then turn the camera back on me and be like, here he comes. And then I draw my bow from 8,000 angles and then I shoot the deer and I'm like, I got him, boys. You know, that's, that's just not gonna be great. And uh, the best way to capture those moments is to capture them live. And then how you do that is with GoPros, um, I don't know what other, I, Osmo just came out with one, I know a bunch of other ones did. I go with the Hero 7s because they have a new uh, super smooth, like basically call it the gimbal killer and I'll show you why that's important and why we run those on the top of the cameras. But either way, doesn't matter. Again, get what you can afford. If you can only afford a little tiny handy, or a little tiny action cam, that's a hundred bucks, great. But let's dive into the blind and uh, I'll have you swing around here, we'll dive in, I'll show you how I set this up and how to run it. You always want your filming camera on the right side of your body in the blind. Because when you are, sh if you're right handed, if you're left handed, you're wanted on the left side. Because you draw your bow, anything, you're like this, and you can peek over with a camera. Say you're running, let's, let's use this handy cam as an example. Say you're running this handy cam, just like this. So, and you, you have the screen on the outside. Well, if this is on the deer, you could draw back your bow and you can glance over to make sure that deer is in frame. If it's on the left side, you, it's, it's not a good idea. So then you can let down, keeping your bow hand on your bow, let down just the camera, draw back, kill the deer, kill the hog, kill the gopher, whatever you're hunting. So it always has to be on your right side if you're right-handed, always on the left side if you're left-handed. That's also why this handy cam works really, really well is because it's got a flip screen. Those mirrorless DSLR styles don't work very well if you're self-filming because you can't triple check. Okay, so obviously you got your main camera on the right side. Now the secondary angle, I'm actually, I'm gonna turn this on so you guys can see how this is capturing. So this is recording. So this is so important, especially if you're trying to capture it, how it happened. I mean, someone watching a hunt, you want them to experience how it happened, your adrenaline, everything else. You can't mimic that in a reenactment. So run a second angle, always put this in reachable distance. So obviously setting up your second angle, you're gonna want this to be in a position to where you're expecting the deer to be. You want it kind of the front shot of uh, uh, the front angle, you know? So you'll have your main camera on the side, your second angle pointing back at you, and you need it to be in reachable distance to turn on when you see the deer coming. So if it, like this right here is, is stretching it because now I have to come all the way over here to turn this on. So if I'm in a situation where that works, cool. If not, if I'm hunting by myself, I'll actually set up another chair close by that won't be in my shooting range or won't be my shooting window, but I can reach up and turn it on. So second angles are great because you turn it on before you shoot. You turn it on when the action's happening and you capture that moment. Now this also plays a huge role when it comes to editing. You know, when you're editing your hunt, you know, having cutaways for making time lapse, you know, from a deer walking through or something taking too long, you can cut back and forth and sync up that time. But uh, anyway, second angle is going to be most important for capturing the drawback, aiming, shooting, the reaction time. I mean, after the deer shot, you're all excited. You know, you just got your animal, you're super pumped. Having that second angle is going to make that moment that much more special. So always make sure you run a second angle. It doesn't have to be a GoPro, it can be your phone. So we're going to grab this attachment to show you guys. You can get this for under 10 bucks on Amazon, probably less than that. But it's, it's for your phone to capture a second angle. If you can't afford a GoPro, you can turn, turn your phone on. Any phone does video and turn that bad boy right back on you like that. So you guys could see and capture that second angle. And then this just threads literally right into the tripod. So you'll need to pick up one of those tripods um, down there, but they're not expensive. Again, under 10 bucks. So 
there's no reason for you guys not to be able to capture a second angle because I can promise you you all have a cell phone and uh, so make sure you capture it. It definitely makes a huge difference when you're trying to produce a good show for YouTube. Okay, so we're diving in now to the camera settings and for this we're going to go inside where there's AC because it is hot out here and I want to show the menus and all that fun stuff. We're going to dive into the quality differences between the cameras. Let's go. So now we're going to dive into the technical side of filming and that's frame rates and camera settings and, and differences in 4K and 1080 and, and basically everything that we run and why we run it. So I think starting with frame rates, the higher the frame rates in your camera, the better the slow motion quality will be. So you can slow motion, you know, 30 frames per second down, but you're going to notice it's like a, a horrible blur that's not any good. And the higher the frame rate, the more information's captured in that moment. So the, the more detail there is, the better the slow motion quality will be. And you can go all the way up to like thousands of frames per second where you can see the bullet spinning out of the, 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 the barrel. Or a, I have a camera that can film a thousand frames per second, this guy actually. And uh, you can see the arrow fletchings and the arrow is bending in the air as it leaves the bow. I mean, that's awesome stuff and really cool. So you just gotta ask yourself, well, what is perfect? And for me, I always wanna film in the highest frame rate that I can based on the conditions that I'm hunting in. So, settings. Why on earth um, is, how on earth do you go through the camera settings and switch it during the hunt? That sounds super annoying. I actually have presets on here. So I got a one, two, and a three. So I always run it on a one and that's that's gonna be the um, 1080 at 120 and then number two is the 4K at 30. So if it's getting low light, I just turn my camera settings to two, it's gonna film in 4K at 30 frames, bingo, everything's good. If I'm filming in the blind, it's dark, it's, it's hard to film in there, 4K 30 frames, any low light conditions, even if it's created by me. So being in a dark blind, even if it's good daylight. So uh, the GoPro on the front, I think is important to understand why this is a part of our setup. So every camera, if I'm gonna run this, I will stick a GoPro on top of here too. And this is gonna be awesome for whenever you're spotting and stalking, walking to and from the blind. This footage with this camera is kind of shaky, where this one won't be. So if you're walking behind somebody and you're filming them, this footage is gonna be coming out of this GoPro is gonna be super hyper smooth, which is gonna just show, it's gonna literally look like you have a gimbal system walking behind a person, which is really cool. And uh, obviously saves your hunts, a lot of things, but also in the blind, you can run a bigger lens. This is a 70 to 300. If I zoom out and go to Sarah with this camera, it's just gonna be totally up in her face, like it's gonna be like her eyeball looks like this. It's not gonna be good footage. But if I pan, I can cut right to the GoPro footage and then it's gonna be nice wide angle, capturing everything in the blind, um, which is also great. But what else is nice about this is when I screw up, which happens a lot, talking, interviewing, whatever, this is kind of like a second angle. I can cut back and forth between these two and uh, it'll, it'll really help, you know, cut down on a lot of time, especially if you got a deer out in the field, it takes two hours to work across the field or something to where you need to be able to cut time out. You can cut back and forth between here, take up minutes of time, which actually can look really cool in post. So I know that was a lot to digest. I do want to recap that really fast. We'll pull up some graphics, make it super easy to follow along. So low light conditions, or filming B-roll in a dark blind or any B-roll for that matter, I will do 4K at 30 frames or for you guys, if you don't have a 4K camera, you could do 1080 at 30 frames. Lower frame rate for whenever it's low light conditions or B-roll. Now for kill shots, you want the highest frame rate that your camera can handle and that is because you will get better slow motion as long as there's good light. I run 1080 at 120 frames per second for our kill photos. But you'll see a lot of our YouTube shots are shot in that 4K at 30 frames because the deer comes out at last light. We have the camera switched over to 30 frames. That way we get good clean footage. So I always prioritize clean footage over slow motion because no one likes watching grainy footage. So 
Front of the GoPro ran is ran at 4K at 60 frames at all times, no matter what. Because this is a secondary camera angle, I don't care as much about this. It's kind of a backup. If, if it's in the blind and I have the time, I will change it, but I just usually don't. 4K 60 frames. And then this guy, I will just run at, again, same rules apply to this. Low light, 4K 30 frames. Kill shot, 1080, 120 if I can. And uh, yeah, so that is the technical side of how we film our hunts and the frame rates of what we film. And for because we export everything at 1080, 30 frames, we always wanna film at least that quality. If you're gonna film a 4K video for YouTube, you can't film anything in 1080. Everything should be filmed in 4K. So you always wanna make sure you film at least in the quality that you're planning on exporting that footage at. So I know that was a lot to digest, but we have a lot more to cover when it comes to, to filming your hunt, so let's keep going. So this next segment is gonna be all about tips and tricks on taking your hunt from being cool to okay to being absolutely epic. And I gotta put this attachment back on here just so you guys can kinda of see how this all goes down. And uh, so for starters, if someone's filming for you, it's probably someone you care about, like your wife, your friend, a cameraman, someone that you actually care about. So include them in the hunt, especially if they're gonna talk, because nothing is more annoying than someone talking or giving direction off camera. If there's not a camera on them and they're talking, it's so frustrating as a viewer. You're like, I don't wanna hear that guy talk. Let the person do the talking. Or if they need direction because it's a child or, or someone that's new to hunting, then put a camera on yourself, and I'm gonna show you that trick right now. So these attachments you can find on Amazon, they're just GoPro attachments, and uh, you just need to put one of these bad boys. Let me spin this around here. I'll try to do this backwards. So I'm gonna show you this. This will make your hunt absolutely epic. You have to believe me. So, spin that bad boy around just like this. Now you're looking at a second angle for the filmer. So now, as a filmer, let me wrap this around over here, it's in the way. So as a filmer, if I'm talking like, yeah, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, you know, and you hear that, I can cut right to this camera angle right here. Or if I'm stalking through, you get the perspective of there being two people. And that's gonna be so important because most people pretend there's no cameraman there. Well, I'm sorry, but it's really hard to get within bow range when you're filming and, and trying to get this camera in the spot and everything and the shooter's trying to shoot the deer and all this stuff is going on. Include that because that makes it so much harder. And if you're gonna be filming, you might as well put a camera back on your guy. So last up, I wanna talk about recovering an animal after dark. So this happens a lot, especially with deer hunters. You shoot your deer, you give it 20, 30 minutes, and it's pitch black. And so what people do is they'll take a flashlight and hold it on the person and trying to film and it's a disaster and it looks bad. That's a good way to ruin a hunt. So one thing I found was getting cube lights it, these make a huge difference. Now, you put these adapters you can buy on Amazon. Just look up GoPro adapters. You'll recognize these things. I think these ones are called small rig or something. But put these on your rig. Check this out. So if I hook this in here and I tighten this bad boy here, tighten this on, I'll put this guy on over here. This is a really cool trick because this is going to illuminate and broadcast a beautiful wide angle light. And you just drop that bad boy down like this. Angle that out because if you have a GoPro on the front, you don't want the shadow of the, the cat up top here to screw with you. So bingo, right there. So check out that. As you guys can tell, this would broadcast a super bright or super bright. It's like two or three thousand lumens on this side, two or three thousand lumens on this side, and it'll make it like daylight. Especially when you're tracking, the, no matter where you turn, that where the camera is looking, the light is also going to be there. These are awesome. And uh, this particular brand, I mean, you just search, you know, cube light, you'll see this. It might be a LumaCube or something. Um, anyway, definitely makes a huge difference when it comes to filming after dark, especially interviews, deer recovery, anything. 
So no shadows is going to be important. That's the rig right there. So pretty crazy looking, I know, but I'm telling you, stuff like this makes a big difference. Now this is definitely on the professional side. This takes a lot of effort, and you'll know the better the quality of video, typically the more effort that went into it. You're like, this is crazy, I'm just trying to film my deer hunt. Well, this is at another level, as you guys can tell. It just, you have to ask yourself, what quality of film do I really wanna have? What quality of video, what quality of memory do I really want to capture? And so that's why you see us going crazy with all these different camera angles and craziness all over the place, you know, because I wanna capture how it happened and capture every detail I can of that moment. Because when I go back and relive that or share that with you guys, you get to experience it as if you were there. And I think that's the whole goal of filming a hunt is to be able to share those experiences with the world. I know that's a big one for me. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is a part one of many series of filming your hunt. So, this is kind of the breakdown of camera settings, different types of cameras, you know, how we kind of film all that. You know, we're gonna dive more into other segments on you know, tree stand setups, ground blind, we kind of covered today, but more details on ground blind spotting, stalking, and uh, many, many more. Well, that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment below if you did, and maybe some other topics that you'd want covered when it comes to filming your hunt. Thank you.